Hey y'all, and welcome to the probably final episode of the testing chamber. Um, if we're going by seven deadly sins, since we have uncovered our five. So let's see. Let's go. Oh, where was I? The background's very loud, isn't it? Hang on, I'll fix that. All right, we were... Oh, yes, we'd found this uh, unopened birthday presents. Unopened birthday, birthday presents and gift wrap boxes litter the table. Each of them feel nearly weightless, as if all the boxes are empty. Good lord. That's a bummer. Blood-soaked gifts litter the table before you. Each box looks pristinely wrapped, yet caked with dirt and blood. Well, Interesting party. Oh, this is different. Tatted and old, yet neatly, neatly folded blankets rest on the table. They're warm to the touch. Oh! In an otherwise cold room. Who just used them? Alright, we've got a first round of questions for this section. Are you afraid of being forgotten? Mm, no. I mean, if people forget me, fine. I, I do my thing. Have you ever heard voices in your head? Does that include my own voice? Because I think everyone has, like, an inner voice. You have a habit of starting projects and not finishing them. If I could tell you how many projects... Ah... <sighs> Would you say you get sick easily? Nah. I work in retail, so I have a pretty robust immune system. Do you ever feel like things end poorly for you, even when they've been going well right up until the end? Uh, yeah, on occasion, things do seem to go sideways. Do you feel like life has been disappointing? Or do you ever feel like... on a, Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with yeah. Do you feel tired, drained, and wish you could just sleep forever? Some days, yeah. Don't you just wish you could roll into a little blanket burrito and sleep for the the whole doggone day and not feel guilty? Do you sometimes have difficulty going to sleep or even staying asleep? Yeah. Gotta get my drink. Pardon. You ever wish you could be more productive? Sometimes. I try and be productive, but chronic migraines and all get in the way. Do you ever suffer from intrusive thoughts that you just can't seem to flush out of your mind? Is this... My psych doc must have sent this to me. Would you say you've experienced many strained friendships or relationships in your time? Mm, no, not that strained, I wouldn't say. Have you ever felt like you're drawn toward people in life who just aren't good for you? Yeah, I'm going to go with yeah, because sometimes I tend to pick up toxic people, and it might be because I'm just too damn nice. Have you ever felt like you're living an unhealthy lifestyle? <laughs> nah, I, I get out. I eat fruits and veg and stuff like that. Have you ever just wished that things could be different? I think everyone has at some point or another. Are you finishing your final answer? Sometimes you just want certain things to be different. Doesn't mean everything has to be different. Hi, butterfly. A small butterfly flutters near you. Its wings begin to sparkle. I'm going to leave it alone because I was feeling real guilty about those butterflies. A twinkling light radiates from the crystallized object on the floor. This is another petal. Not pleased with the pile it was in. That's nasty. All right, where's the king? There you are. She loves me not. Oh, this is not looking good. Are these organ? Oh, days. Going back to the organs. Oh. Oh, that's just messed up. Oh, I'm not even reading that. Ah! Butterfly, move. This is another one of these altars. Surrounding... All surrounding a picture of a mirror. A picture of a mirror. 
Now, we were supposed to find a mirror to get out. Amongst the coins, you notice so there's one in particular that's only half a coin. Can I take that? You put half the coin... Ooh, I have the right half of a coin. It's a relic. All right. Now, I think uh, I think I missed the other one, though. Move, butterfly. You're in the way. Let's see what the clock... This small bloody handprint is pressed onto the case of the clock. The hands of the clock are frozen on 222. Now, we did that already. We did 222, so I don't know if that has any significance. Oh! Oh! Yikes. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, y'all can read that if you want to. Woo! Um. I don't... I... Ugh, do I have to make a choice? It's... They have the same poem. And they're both... So it's... It's red and blue. What would you like to do? I'm gonna walk away. Can I... Do I have to pick one? Yeah. Oh, man. Alright, I have to pick one. Oh. Well. Uh. Oh, jeez. Alright, I guess I'll pick this one. Uh, don't make me go through the poem again. Oh, lordy. Why is it making you pick a doll? It's messed up. All right. Um. Yeesh. There's a blood-soaked coin underneath its dress. Acquire the wisdom token. Oh, hey, they blew up. Oh, good lord. Oh, that's no good. All right, now we can go left or right. Do you want to go where the warm blankets were? Was the was the blue of the blankets the the indication on what doll I was supposed to pick? Because I really just kind of went with blue. Blood money. Ooh, what are we on? Greed. The metallic smell of iron stings your nostrils. You hear the clanking of coins in the distance, and you catch a glimmer of something in the shadows out of the corner of your eye. Oh dear. Oh, hello, little imp dude. A demonic stone figure resides in front of you. It appears to have a space for something at the base of the statue. What would you like to do? I don't have anything for it that I know of. There's a tattered diary on this altar. First page seems to be ripped out. The parchment material used... Oh! Perhaps the missing page could be reconstructed if one were to find enough pieces. So it's like the diaries we've been writing in and we've been taking the page with us. Old dusty clock, dried candle wax, coats the hands. What's it say? Are we back at... Yeah, we're back at 333. And then the journal. Here we go. Reading the questions from the journal. Do you ever have dreams that you could swear are real? Yeah. You ever wake up from a dream and you're just like... I could have sworn that was happening. Uh, in the past, have you ever felt positive or happy? Well, or when you felt positive or happy, have you ever experienced an immediate sense of ne negativity that just sucks all your happiness away instantly? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it'll just take, like, one little thing to make everything go wrong, you know? If you were camping alone in the woods at night and you heard a woman scream, would you investigate? First of all, why am I camping alone in the woods? Uh, that seems, well, I can't say that that seems like something, well, yeah, I'd go, because I'm not going to be alone without some form of protection. If you were alone in your home at night and you suddenly heard the sound of children laughing, there are no children in my house, would you continue to stay in your home for the night? If it's a child ghost? Yeah. Because usually you can just put out toys or something. Maybe put out some toys... Kid ghosts can play with those. If you were camping in the woods alone and something kept on zipping your tent, would you continue to stay in the woods? Um. Well, whatever's unzipping my tent, just, that's very rude. I'd probably pack up and move because I wouldn't get any sleep. 
If you saw your neighbor putting a dead body in the trunk of their car, would you attempt to stop them? Um, my next door neighbors are my aunt and uncle, so if they need to put a dead body in the trunk of a car, being family, I'm probably going to need to help them. Would you attempt to stop them? No. If you're driving home at night and saw a naked woman on the side of the road covered in blood, would you stop to help? Oh, that's tough. I don't know, because she might be the psycho. Why is she naked and covered in blood? Um, I can't say that I would stop to help, but I would call... I would call the cops, and they can stop and help. I don't have experience with naked women covered in blood. If you were fast asleep in your bed, only be awakened by an unseen force grabbing you and shaking you violently, would you attempt to go to sleep once it was over? Yeah, that's just rude. If you were in an empty grocery store, in a, an empty grocery store, and a strange man appeared and started sprinting at you, would you turn and run? Heck yeah! I'm not gonna stand there looking at frickin' linguine, instant rice when the creepy dude's coming at me. If you were home alone, sitting in the bathtub. When suddenly the lights turned off in the bathroom and the door began to unlock and slowly swing open to reveal no one standing there. Would you get dressed and leave your house immediately? I don't know. Do I still have shampoo in my hair? Because then, you know, I'd need to at least finish taking a bath. Um. See, it's the unlock part that gets me. Because if I have the door mostly shut, my cat will come in. No. I probably wouldn't leave immediately. If you had to resort to cannibalism in order to, to survive, do you think you could do it? Whew. Wow. Can't you just ask me about punching a nun like the other games? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, technically, I guess people are made of meat. <laughs> Ugh. If I had to survive... Yeesh. There's got to be other ways around that. Because part of me says, sure, yeah, let's do it. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, e that's... I don't want to be a Wendigo. Or do I? Hmm. <clears throat> do you think you could do it? <sighs> don't judge me. Okay. If you were stranded on a boat in the middle of the ocean, do you think you could survive long enough to be rescued? I don't think so. I don't know a lot about sailing. I get seasick, so I would l most likely become dehydrated and a husk of my former self within days. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to burn to death? Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't liked the idea, so... Would you consider yourself to be a morbid person? Not really? One final question remains on the page. It's emboldened and outlined in red. Oh, okay. Are you satisfied? No. With what, specifically? That's really what it all comes down to, isn't it, Wanderer? Are you satisfied? Satisfaction is the death of desire, you know. I know, you gotta keep wanting something to keep going. Alright, so we've got another page. Final page of the journal, yep. Perhaps this will be of use. I wonder if that's what- Oh, hey oh, that didn't do that before. Is that the- Is that like the final, final page? Hey, who do we have here? We're running out of sins, so... Greed. Hence this huge pile of coins in the back. Greed is a hungry mouth with an insatiable appetite for more. In the absence of satisfaction for what one has, they will crave and they will continue to eat until they've dung their own graves with their teeth. That sounds like it would take a really, really long time. Hey, butterfly. Hi, butterfly walk away. Nope. Get our pedal. Take that. Yep. 
Yep, flower panel. All right. Where were we? She loves me. Okay, well that's good. Good for you, bra. And this is gonna have the two words. What do we have this time? Future and present. What would you like to do? The future will get here eventually, but if you don't focus on the present, you might not have a future. I think. All right, what do we get? Ooh, a magic mirror. Is that the magic mirror we were supposed to be looking for? Do you like what you see, Wanderer? Or perhaps you're afraid of what you might see when you gaze a bit deeper? I don't know, is it a cursed mirror? Let's go look at these coins. A massive gold chalice filled to the brim with coin. Are they coins or arcade tokens? Either way, that's a win. Uh, it's an indentation in the base as if it's been moved from its original location. Oh. Oh. I don't know if I want to take it. If I take it, then I'm by not succumbing to greed. Here, you can have this token. I don't... I'm not bringing these tokens. Courage is not being fearless, for there is no courage with the absence of fear. Courage is being afraid yet acting anyway. Are you a courageous soul? Sometimes. I'd like to think I am. So that should unlock the... Okay, so that'll unlock one of these doors. Now, down here... This is now glowing. Mysterious altar stands before you. Uh, first page seems to be ripped out. Begin to piece together each torn journal page you've collected to form a full page in the diary. Oh, really? Final entry. An empty sky leaves our prayers in vain. A solemn swear through darkened window panes. We confess our sins of flesh and blood, for we're buried deep and swept away by flood. Our ashes carried in the midnight wind. A bitter vow we wish we could rescind. A fallacy of hope to raise our spirits high, for we're dropped below and left there to die. Wow. Uh, an appraisal of worth judged by our peers, a sign as of... of affection as they wipe our tears. They bottle our blood and drink our sweat. Gross. To build a future we don't deserve to get. Huh. And if the fires come to claim us all, the few brave souls that refuse to fall will echo through the walls of eternity to a future that the lowly won't rise to see. We chase the demons of the past to build a kingdom that will never last. Upon sweat and tears, blood and bone, we build a new place to call our home. Signed, the Madman. Yeah, we've heard from him before. He's been leaving poetry all over the place. All right, Madman. Thanks for the uh, poem. Next time, could you do like a jaunty limerick or something? Maybe, you know, that would be, be kind of fun. All right, so was that was that it? The diary of the madman sits complete on the altar. All pages beyond the first have been stained with red wine and dirt. They're too damaged to be legible. I guess that's that. Did I look at this clock yet? Was this? Yeah, we looked at this one. Which door do we want to go through? Eesh. I don't know. The one near the money makes me nervous. I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's go. We did find a mirror, though, so maybe that's the mirror we were supposed to, hey, be looking for. I think you hear what sounds like someone's someone flipping through pages in a heavy tome. You can't quite figure out where it's coming from, and you don't see anyone else in the room. Is it this butterfly? small butterfly flutters near you. Oh, a tiny noose on the butterfly. Oh, I'm, I'm going to leave the... Oh, we've got a rope and a noose. We had a noose once. We threw it down a hole to feed the 
that sparkly maw thing. 444. All right, let's see. There are the ropes. What do we have here? This has got to be the final sin. Pride. Pride will always come before the fall, and it will always create long distance between two close people. Pride seeks to break us from the inside, but I assure you, no one is ever choked from swallowing their pride. Ooh. Envy, gluttony. Oh, oh, we got them all. Greed, sloth, lust, wrath, and pride. All things that grow within, all things we cannot and mustn't avoid entirely. They all have their place, and they each have their uses. Everything in life is about balance. Exceeding the balance of moderation builds a tower upon an unstable foundation, and we shall watch our kingdoms crumble if we stack them too high and heavy with any one of these. Wow. That's... So... Uh, the, I already looked at the butterfly. It has the noose. Oh, that's interesting. Is that a fossil? See, we've got a book. We've got oh, this dude's pedal. I don't know how many more of these we need to find, but let's take that. All right, I think we're on. She loves me not. Oh, that's a bummer. I hope we find a, at least one more. And let's see, old wooden chest. This is gonna have the two words. What are they? Knowledge and power. Knowledge is power. So I get both. Oh, the book of knowledge. Does that update every once in a while? Or is it like buying an old Encyclopedia Britannica? And it's already out of date when it's printed. I know. I know. I said they're the same thing. Knowledge is power. What is this? An old stone plaque sits pressed against the wall. The chiseling has been lost to the test of the time, and you can't quite make out what it once meant to read. Oh. I guess I don't have anything for it. Half a noose. The rope has been severed from the loop. I wonder if that's the one the butterfly has. Oh. No, this is the... Okay. Maybe that's an indication of being freed from pride. Blood soap journal sits at the top of a wooden table. Oh, we didn't do the questions in this room yet. Alright. Yep. Do you ever feel a darkness inside of you? Yeah, on occasion. Have you ever felt like you're destined for more than where your life has taken you? I don't know. It's a good question. I'd like to think so, but, you know. Mounting failures ever every once in, in uh, so often kind of slow you down. Have you ever been so afraid of the, of the future that you s just stopped trying to progress? For a while, yeah. Have you ever considered that you might have a, feeler, a fear of failure? Yeah. Um, fear of success. That would be interesting. Because if you do succeed, then you're under constant pressure to maintain or improve. So maybe. Do you value honesty above all else? Above all else? No, there are other things I value more, but, I mean, honesty is... Do you have a set of morals that others might consider questionable? <laughs> Not really, no. I mean, generally speaking, maybe one or two things. Do you follow your own moral code? Nah, I'm pretty much in the societal norms kind of thing, I guess. Do you believe standing for what you believe sometimes means standing alone? Mm, well, you can usually find some people to stand with you. Are you afraid of where your life may take you in the next several years? Oh, nah. Nah, I okay. Are you suffering inside right now? Like, this instant? Not this, not this very instant. No, thank you. Do you ever wish that your words would fall onto ears that weren't so deaf? Sometimes. Because sometimes people are dumb. Do you ever feel like no one listens to you? Do you ever feel like you can understand others quite 
Well, but others can't understand you. Well, I am kind of weird, so... Are you afraid of the unknown? Uh, I don't know. Kind of curious of the unknown. Not really afraid. Are you afraid of running out of time as your life comes to an end before you've managed to accomplish all the things you wish to accomplish? Yes! Are you afraid of surviving while your loved ones perish? Yes. Do you have a fear of abandonment? Yeah, but I don't know why. Do you carry around a lot of heartache from your past? Unfortunately, yes. Do you harbor resentment for others that are do I'll hold a grudge for ages. Would you say you have some regrets in life? Some? I got a few more than some. If you could do it all over again, would you do anything differently? Several things. Are you proud of who, who you've become? Well, I'm not ashamed of who I've become. I mean, I've done a few good things, I'd like to think. Do you feel like your choices and circumstances in life have made you who you are? Yeah, especially my choices. Do you wish you had been treated more fairly by others in the past? Yeah, quite a few others. Do you strive to treat others better than you might have been treated? I try. Unless you act like a douche canoe. And then all bets are off. Do you ever wish you could help more people? Yes. Do you sometimes wish you could more easily help yourself? Mm, yeah, sometimes. Do you look forward to where life may take you? I think so. I'm going to say yes. Do you feel like you're, you aren't living up to your full potential? Wow. This is, this is all yes. If you knew that the following that following your dreams would end in certain success, would you do whatever it takes to pursue and achieve them? Certain success? Well, what do you mean by whatever it takes? Um that could that could be a slippery slope. I won't cross certain lines. If you could travel into the past or the future, but never return to the present, would you do it? I don't think so because the allure of the pa of the past or the future may wear off very quickly have you made peace with your past negative have you made peace with your current circumstances yes i think are you afraid of what conflict may arise in the future you mean the one currently going on if you could work twice as much as you do now and reap twice the amount of benefits from uh I'd get burned out so quickly. Do you ever wish you could be forgiven for the wrong you've done? Yeah. yeah. Do you ever blame yourself when things might not be your fault all the time? Do you feel others place a blame on you more often than they should? Sometimes. Oh, would you enjoy an entire month of solitude with no communication with the outside world? Um, does that include my pets? No. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. Do you wish your life turned out differently thus far? On occasion, yeah. Are you proud of what you've managed to accomplish? The few things that I've accomplished, sure. Do you feel like you could have accomplished more than you've already done? Yeah. Have you ever felt like you're wasting your potential in life? Sometimes. Do you get the sense you have a hidden talent? Or undiscovered potential just waiting to break free? Jeez, I hope so. I don't know. Have you ever felt like there's something special and unique that you just can't place your finger on? Yeah. you have a difficult time trusting others? Absolutely. Do you ever get the sense that your mind works differently from others? Not, no. I mean, it works the same. It's just a little bipolar -y. Have you ever wanted to make other people happier than the world has made you? Yes. If I told you that everything is going to be okay, would you believe me? Yes, I would. I would believe you. Random bloody journal in the middle of the testing chamber. A token! Oh, a wisdom token! Oh, there's another final question? There's a set of switches on the wall, each of them with a color and a number designated to them with no other indication. Which would you choose to flip? Green! I like green. Oh. Um, I'm gonna go through the creepy news door, actually. 
Yeah, let's go through the creepy new store. Upon a rotting house. Ooh. The smell of mold fills the chamber you now reside in, unlike any that you've experienced before. Oh, goody. There's a mistakable overabundant dampness and an exuberant amount of humidity that hangs heavy in this room. Oh, man. The sound of water constantly dripping from the ceiling and walls is enough to drive someone mad if given enough time. <gasps> is the madman in here? Look at all this junk. It's like it used to be a kitchen. An iron stove. Oh. Cooking utensils appear to be unused and in good condition. Oh. Hmm. Sink sits a wall against the walls. Rusted and filthy. Sour stench rises from the drain. Ew. They need to use some of those sandy sticks. And mixes with the smell of hanging garlic and herbs from the wall. Can we take the garlic in case we come across a vampire? Oh, that's bread. I thought it was a... Oh, small jars of viscous liquid. Maybe that's jam? I hope. Tattered peach parts, peach parts, peach parts, part, 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 hangs on the wall containing ripped recipes. Oh. These veggies? Ew. Carrots and peppers. What do we have here? Wait, what do we have? Salt preserved fish heads. Yikes. Roly poly fish heads. Various cups cabbage. Ooh. Gross. Rotten cabbage is nasty. Mixed grains, that's no good. Are we back up to five fifty five? Because I think the last one was four four four. Yep. Hey, whoa. What is that? What is this? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Someone broke this table. Broken glass with chunks of flesh and he's of blood still rest on the old splinter to Ugh Ew. This is a map. Looking like a map. Lands with an ash smudged map of lands you've never seen or heard before rest on the wall. Nothing about the lands or travel routes seems familiar to you whatsoever. Yeah, alright. An old painting of dark figures standing in front of a castle sits on the wall. The figures in the painting are faceless, that you can feel them watching you as you gaze upon them. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's the king. Maybe I found all his petals. Did I? Yeah, let's talk to her first. The old woman, beautiful flower rests in her hands. What would you like to do? Give her a token. Hey, maybe she'll give me the final petal. So it could say, um... She loves me instead of she loves me not. When you're feeling pain, take time to ponder what's hurting, why it's hurting, and what you've done to deserve it. And how you got in the position you're in. Life is trying to teach you a very valuable lesson. I don't know what lesson is trying to teach me chronic migraines, but fine. You'll be forced to relearn this lesson over and over again if you don't take the time to learn properly the first time. <laughs> it's great. Let's go over here and talk to the king. An unworldly king sits alone at a decrepit wooden table, lost deep in thought. He pays no attention to you as you approach. Yet he mumbles to, uh, quietly to himself, just loud enough for you to make out a few words. The king's eyes search for something on your person, inspecting you up and down. He turns his head to you for a brief moment before speaking. You don't have enough petals to be worth my time, unworthy of my breath. Only petals. Bring me more petals. Um, there wasn't one down here, was there? I didn't see any petals down here. Does the butterfly have a petal? Ooh, rotting and festering. Ugh, gross. I'm not I'm still not touching the butterfly. Why um are you sitting on a petal? Because usually there's one when I come in here. Well, we'll go this way, I guess. How did I miss a petal? 
You hear fire crackling in the distance, feel the warmth of its frame. This room smells clean and pure as though it's been well maintained and actually lived or actively lived in. Alright, game saved. He's a butterfly. What's this one? Doesn't appear to have anything abnormal. Well, I'm gonna leave it. Hey, nice fireplace. Piece of parchment. What's it say? A list of names you've never heard of. Strangely, all the names appear to be written upside down. Is the paper hanging upside down? Is some still life? No, no, no. Read that. Oh, old painting with of a man with a distorted face rests on the stone wall. His eyeballs appear to be plucked out of his head and rest on the table in front of him. The painting is titled The Watcher. Not very effective, is he? Fireplace rages on, yet the cobwebs around it cling tight and refuse to burn. There's no way the fireplace could stay lit for a long period of time with the current state it's in. Someone has been here recently. Maybe it's a magic fire. Oh, that's a bear. And a magic circle. And a demon clock? And a regular clock. Where are we now? 7.06. The hands emit a faint purple glow. Like this? What's this? Statue of an unholy figure. It radiates dark energy and emits a great heat from within its molten belly. Well. I don't know if I want to put all my coins in there. Nice tapestry. Is that for this? Is that Loki? It's a Loki bear. It remains idle. Yeah, you get the sense that it's watching every move you decide to make. Something rests in the hands of the figure. What do you want to do? Inspect. It's holding a small coin. Cool, a wisdom token. All right, I don't think I've gotten... Oh, hey, there's a mirror. Is that the escaping mirror? Maybe? We were supposed to find a mirror to get out of here. An old plaque rests on the walls of various names. There are only four names on the plaque you could see. Three of them are names you never heard of before, and the final name is yours. Are these people who've gotten out then, hopefully? Nice fruit. Much better fruit than in the previous room. Fresh fruit sits in a bowl on the table beneath some tattered tapestries. The fruit seems like it was just picked and washed this morning. There's no sight, sight of bugs or pests. No sight of rot or decay. That's nice. Um, what happens if I put... I think I'm going to have to put all my coins in here. Toss all your wisdom coins. You hear a dark voice echo off the walls of your mind. You've come this far. Take a good hard look in the mirror. You deserve to know the truth. You've earned your reflection. Secret unlocked. You've paid tribute, and you'll get exactly what you deserve. Okay. Go up to the mirror, then. Is it going to lock me in? Look at this. Oh, hey. Bleh. This is it, Wanderer. This is what you've been waiting for. Or, yeah. Oh, you're the Watcher, because you don't have any eyeballs. If a decision you made has led you to this moment. Now, gaze upon the mirror and tell me what you see. I see swirly purple disco lights. I still see. Pressed against the wall sits a mystical mirror, swirling with radiant magics. You can see many different in images contorting themselves within the twisted nether. Would you like to look deeper into the mirror and see your reflection? Let's do this! See what's got to say. Maybe I'll get a secret word. Mirror, mirror, show to thee what secrets have been hidden from me. Show me weakness, show me strength. Describe in detail, tell in length. Romper, stomper, bomper, boo. Ah, <sighs> all right. So, yep, more poem, more poem. You gaze deeply into the mirror at your own reflection. What reflects back at you are the answers you seek. I hope so, because it's been a little while in seeking. Deep within the mirror, reflection is formed. It is revealed to you. Ah! The reflection of duality. Holy cats. What the? The story of duality is an interesting one for multiple reason reasons. It said there was once a man who was so lost in life with a no foreseeable direction, he asked everyone he met 
in his journal for advice. Every day he would ask someone new, what should I do? Where should I go? Every day he was shunned time and time again. And if he wasn't shunned, he was given poor advice that surely led him in the wrong direction. After years upon years and thousands upon thousands of words given in an attempt to help this man, he soon realized that no one had the answer he was seeking. In a severe bout of depression and misery, he decided to venture down to the river to drown himself. Well, that's not healthy. Upon reaching the river, he inhaled a deep breath of air that he assumed to be his last, closed his eyes, and exhaled in defeat. He then opened his eyes briefly and stared down at the water before him, and where his reflection was meant to be, what he saw shocked and startled the man to his very core, for in the water, the reflection staring back at the man, was a woman of incredible beauty and elegance. The man kicked the water with his feet, and the image of the woman dissipated briefly, but over the next few moments returned just as it had once been. The man took a great step backward in awe, and the water began to swirl before him. The river raged until up from the water came a beautiful woman. Where's this river? Standing in the middle of the river above the raging water, the woman looked directly into the man's eyes and spoke in a sweet, calming voice. You seek a direction, but you know your direction. The man was confused by her words. His initial thought was to ask the woman who she was, but the thought quickly washed away as he was overcome with a sense of familiarity upon hearing her voice. It's almost as if he knew exactly who she was, as if they'd been close before. Perhaps close wouldn't even be a bit of an understatement to describe the emotion that was washed over the man at that moment in time. The woman spoke once more. You've asked the world where you should go, but you've liked no answer given. The man paused for a moment. The woman then asked, do you know why? The man immediately answered, yes, I do. I don't like their answers because the path they tell me to go on comes from their heart and their soul, but not of my own, the man said pridefully. The woman responded, that is correct. So why don't you ask yourself what direction you should venture in? To which the man quickly replied, because my heart is broken and my soul is enslaved. I've been shunned. I've been outcast. I've been beaten down, spit on, and cast aside for as long as I can remember. No one wants me. No one needs me. And my future is painted black. The woman smiled at the man before speaking once more. Your future is painted whatever color you wish it to be. You are hard, you are blunt. You are the defensive walls that encapsulates and protects everything I am. The man asked the woman questioningly, and what is it that you are? To which the woman replied, I am soft, I am love, I am forgiveness. I am everything that you reject and everything you're afraid to accept about yourself for the fear of being vulnerable. Oh, the fear of being weak. If you wish to find direction, you must stop imprisoning yourself within your own walls. And with that, the woman walked forward slowly until her body melted with a man's. And as they collided, she disappeared within him. The man felt an overwhelming sense of relief and calmness wash over him, as if he'd been reborn, nay, reawakened. It's as if something that he knew existed within him was unleashed as if the door that kept his true self locked away inside had just been unlocked for the very first time. He felt a sense of freedom in his life that wasn't there before, and with that he turned his back on the river and walked confidently in his own direction. Oof, the reflection of duality represents two sides to a person, the warmth and the cold, the sweet and the bitter, the fearful and the courageous, the wise and the foolish, the forgiving and the judging, each side of ourselves is meant to work in harmony and balance to create a life that's perfect for us as an individual, but sometimes we struggle to find that balance and often feel separated from our other half. When we attempt to pull ourselves back together, it can be incredibly painful, and that pain we feel when we attempt to give, oh, to live in balance is what prevents us from conjoining back together fully. What we don't realize is that pain is temporary, and if we could just strengthen ourselves enough to deal with the pain of rebalancing we can be whole once again. Pain is weakness leaving the body, apparently. We can feel things that we haven't felt since we were children. We can love with our entire heart. We can think with our entire mind. We can feel with our entire soul, and we can find the direction we're truly meant to go. As long as we're balanced, we can solve any problem the world throws at us. We can ask others for advice, but internally, 
We all know the answers to our own problems because our problems are our own and not anyone else's. They cannot feel what we feel precisely the way we feel it, and they cannot solve the issues that we suffer from. We know that what we need to do in order to get better, to not only survive and merely exist, but to thrive in this world. We're often, we often ignore the solution because it's more painful than we care to admit. If you're out of balance in any way, focus on rebalancing the sides of you that are lacking, and you will solve even the biggest problems in life. And for the problems that don't have a proper solution, your balanced self will be strong enough to endure any hardship that may come your way. Whew. Let the reflection of duality be your warning and your blessing, and venture forth in your own direction toward a healthy and balanced life that you can be proud living. Your secret word is duality. Remember that word. Oh, it will benefit you greatly if you decide to use it. Better write that down. Does this mean we can escape? Sometimes the mirror reflects something within your soul, and sometimes the mirror reflects the reverse of what resides inside of you. Both factors are of equal value. It's up to you to interpret whether your reflection shows your reality or the reverse of it, Wanderer. So pay heed and listen to my words. The mirror never lies. Okay. I will free you from the cons confines of this place once and for all. You're free to do as you please from this point onward. Really? Cool. I wish you the best of luck in your journey forward. For it is now time for you to do some reflection of your very own. Whoa. This is some pretty good stuff. All right, so if you want to check out the testing chamber, it's available on Steam. Link's in the description, as long as a link, as well as a link to my Patreon and coffee accounts. And thanks for joining me for this episode, the third and final, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.